dominating the Missouri Valley and the SEC. Jackie Carmichael and the Illinois State Redbirds improved by eight wins this year and are in the postseason for the fourth time in five years. Meanwhile, senior Terrence Henry and the Ole Miss Rebels are NIT veterans, but they've yet to hoist the trophy in the Big Apple. The road to New York starts now. of the 75th NIT tonight from the Tad Smith Coliseum in Oxford, Mississippi. It's the seven seed Redbirds of Illinois State taking on the Ole Miss Rebels, the two seed. Arizona, the one seed facing Bucknell on this side of the bracket tonight in Tucson. The winner of this game gets Stanford, which beat Cleveland State last night. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oxford, Mississippi, alongside my esteemed partner, Joe Dean Jr. I'm Clay Matt, but glad to have you along tonight for the NIT. Ole Miss really played well down the stretch, Joe. They won five of their last six and earned a first-round home game, but it's not going to be easy tonight. Illinois State has always played well against the SEC. Well, Illinois State has a rich basketball history, and it's 5-0 and against SEC competition. Yep. They're a team that upset a very good Wichita Tall State yep. team in the Missouri Valley Final and almost uh, got to the championship. So Tim Jankovic, an outstanding basketball coach at Illinois State, used to coach in the SEC at Vanderbilt. Yeah. Let's take a look at our one-on-one -on -one tonight, Joe. And these are two teams that physically look very different. A lot of size for Ole Miss and Illinois State. They've got slight guys who can shoot. Well, Illinois State's going to play a lot of small players. We'll see three small guards, but they shoot it extremely well. Great from the foul line. But they're going up against a big, strong front line at Ole Miss. Terrence Henry, Reginald Buckner, who will not start tonight, and Murphy Holloway. That's the concern for the Redbirds. All right, here are the starting lineups for Illinois State. It's Nick Moore, Ty Brown, John Wilkins, John Eakey, and Jackie Carmichael, a very athletic guy, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Ole Miss, the freshman Jarvis Summers at the point, Nick Williams, Terrence Henry, DeMarco Cox in the starting lineup for Reginald Buckner, who's still up dealing with an ankle injury and Murphy Holloway running out for starting five. There is head coach Tim Jankovic of Illinois State in his fifth year. He has Illinois State in the postseason for the fourth time, all NIT. And Andy Kennedy, first coach in Ole Miss history to lead the Rebs to five postseason appearances. Again, all NITs. The officials, Raina Tilly, Pat Evans, and Brad Ferry. Illinois State in road red. Ole Miss in home white. We're underway, and the Redbirds control the opening tip. Ole Miss is going to start man-to-man, -man, but a lot during the latter part of this season, Ole Miss played 2-3 zone. I suspect we'll see that here tonight. The alley-oop from Moore to Carmichael is a little off the mark, and here comes Henry the other way for Ole Miss. A little jump ball play by Tim, Tim Jankovic right off the jump. And of course, I mentioned Illinois State. They knocked off Wichita State. That was in the semifinals of the Missouri Valley Championship. Got beaten overtime in the championship game against Creighton, who, of course, is an eighth seed in the NCAA tournament. Terrence Henry hoping he's not playing his final home game here tonight. He's the senior for Ole Miss. Missed that last shot. And on the other end, Tyler Brown gets the score and started with a three ball. Yeah, he's one of the veteran players for uh, Illinois State out of Owensboro, Kentucky. And Tim Jankovic talked a lot about today how well they shoot the basketball. Nick Williams missed that shot. DeMarco Cox battling underneath, and Ole Miss is going to have it. It's going to be interesting to see here, Joe, who shows up tonight. Is it Nick Williams who's been very good or, or the guy who kind of has disappeared at times in recent weeks? Yeah, and in the opening round of the SEC tournament in New Orleans, Nick Williams went for 22 points and looked like an offensive juggernaut shooting the ball off the dribble and from three. But uh, the last two games of the tournament really had a hard time, and right off the bat, he shoots an air ball here. Here's Murphy Holloway back. Backing in with seven on the shot clock. Can't get it to go on the rebound. Pulled down by John Wilkins. The Redbirds have to rebound well tonight. They know that. No question about it. Tim Jankovic talked a lot today about his team's ability to withstand the power and strength of the Ole Miss Rebels inside. But that guy right there, Jackie Carmichael, a three-year veteran for Tim Jankovic, is a great player, very athletic, and you see his offensive talent on that play. 
Averaged 15 points and 12 rebounds during the Low Valley Tournament. He's on the board. And this is going to be a foul. Offensive foul on Ole Miss. Carmichael's a guy that like to post up down low, and you watch him put the ball on the floor against DeMarco Cox. Nice fall away. I mean, that is almost impossible to defend. And Jackie Carmichael at 6'9", 240, out of Manhattan, Kansas, actually played at the same high school as his coach, Tim Jankovic, Manhattan High School. And he was a great point guard in his time at Kansas State. Here's more from outside. Buries the three and a fast start for Illinois State. Andy Kennedy forced to call an early timeout as his team has fallen behind big early. Well, we've talked a lot about the fact that the mid-major programs, in many cases, there's, there's a fine line to uh, their ability versus SEC caliber teams. Ole Miss has never beaten Illinois State. Of course, it's been a while since they played one another. But uh, Illinois State is in probably one of the more underrated conferences in the country, as you see from normal Illinois, 21,000 students. The Missouri Valley Conference has a rich history of basketball success through the years. Creighton and Wichita State both this year will be in the NCAA tournament. And just a few years ago, Clay, there were four Missouri Valley right. teams that made the NCAA field. So this is a great basketball league, a lot of interest in Illinois State, just one of those teams that, that is always a contender in that conference. First time the Valley had two ranked teams at the conference tournament, and Illinois State almost beat them both. Right, exactly. Out of bounds. And Ole Miss is gonna have it here. Illinois State has hit its first three shots. Two of them have been threes. It's an eight nothing lead for the Redbirds. Now foul here on Moore. Well, you had a good look at Tim Jankovic on the sideline who coached at Vanderbilt under Kevin Stallings. There he is. And, of course, Kevin Stallings was a former head coach at Illinois State. As a matter of fact, had led them to their last NCAA appearance in 1998. Well, he's got a good one this year. Could make a deep run in the tournament. I think they will. I really do. Really like Vandy. There is Terrence Henry, who's had a good senior season. He gets Ole Miss on the board. Second team all SEC this year. And again, hoping to extend his college career at least one more game. Nick Moore in the paint. Good defense by Summers. They forced the turnover. Williams ahead of the pack. Nick Williams. And Ole Miss has cut the lead in half. Nick Moore tried to do too much that time for Illinois State, driving down the baseline. Ole Miss is tall and long and hard to shoot over them when you get it that deep and you're only five foot nine. Tyler Brown for three. Rattles off the rim. And Holloway controls the rebound. Third in the SEC in rebounding this year for Ole Miss. He's had a good year too. The Summers will pull it back out. Williams dials up a three, and Ole Miss, going after the timeout, they got some good medicine during that target. Well, Andy Kennedy obviously uh, got, him, got him going, got him fired up at the timeout, and Nick Williams a big key because Illinois State's going to play a very tight, packed-in man-to-man defense to keep the ball out of the lane. Williams needs to shoot it well from the outside for the Rebels. In transition, Henry. looking for the whistle. He thought he was standing his ground. Henry went right over the top of him. It's hard to take a charge with your face, Clay. <laughs> he literally, Terrence Henry, jumped right over the top of Nick Moore to lay that basketball in. Great athletic play. 9-0 run, and Ole Miss has taken the lead for the first time. Moore, strong off the heel. Again, Ole Miss wants to push the tempo here. Be a little more patient. Go look over to Andy Kennedy. Marco Cox. All 280 pounds of him muscling his way in for the score. Not normally a big score for the Ole Miss Rebels, but Demarco Cox against a team that is a little bit undersized in terms of physical strength takes it strong in the lane with the jump hook. Here's Tyler Brown, the Juco transfer for Illinois State. He 
feed it to Wilkins. Leans in on Holloway, creates some space, and falling away, John Wilkins, who they call Frenchie, gets the bucket. Yeah, great touch. Again, he and Carmichael both with the nice little fadeaway jump shot, showing their talent and their skill in shooting the basketball. This is a very good shooting team, the Redbirds from Illinois State. Nice move by Holloway. Can't finish on the reverse. Moore tries to go back door, knocked away by Henry. And poked out of bounds. It will belong to Ole Miss. An 11-0 run for Ole Miss after falling behind by eight. Came out like a house of fire here tonight. Jumped out to an 8 nothing lead, but Ole Miss leads it now 11-10 in the early stages here at Oxford tonight. Joe, Ole Miss came into February looking more like an NCAA tournament team than not, but they lost five of six in the month of February. However, you know, late in the season, ended up winning five of six to finish strong, and here they're hosting the first round of the NIT. Yeah, at the end of the year, they had a great win at Arkansas. They beat a very good Alabama team here on their home floor, and then won two games in the SEC tournament, including an overtime win over Tennessee, who, of course, is the number one seed in this NIT. So a lot of people thought if they had made it to the final of the SEC tournament, they might have been considered for the NCAA, but here they are, a number two seed in a very strong NIT field. Andy Kennedy very pleased with his bunch right now wow. as we see Brian Allen hit his first shot. One of the bench players in the entire Missouri Valley. Yeah, outstanding shooter, the left-hander, outstanding athlete who played football at Minnesota, then transferred down to Illinois State where he was going to try to play a little football, but is now concentrating solely on basketball. Summers misses that three. A couple of empty possessions in a row for Ole Miss, and here come the Redbirds leading by two. There's a double team for Wilkins. He fires over the top of it, can't get it to go. You don't make a shot like that. There's not a lot of offensive opportunities for the Redbirds and Ole Miss. We've talked about their physical strength and the advantage they have on the backboards. Reginald Buckner in the game now for Ole Miss. Misses that shot again. He is dealing with that sore ankle suffered in the SEC tournament. Allen missed that shot. Tried to track down his old miss, but Ladarius White comes away with it. Be interesting to see how much Buckner plays tonight. Yeah, well, he's uh, been bothered by a sore ankle. He sprained it in the SEC tournament and has chronic knee problems, does Reginald Buckner. So doesn't practice a lot. Andy Kennedy uh, didn't even make him go through shoot around this morning. and uh, But he's out there today. Great shot blocker and rebounder for the Rebels. Illinois State by two. This is Anthony Cousin. They have a small perimeter now. All three point guards out on the floor. Small for Illinois State, but they can really knock down shots. Tyler Brown from Owensboro, Kentucky, transferred in from Marshalltown Community College in Iowa. Illinois State now four of six from three. Brown hit that one with about four seconds on the shot clock. Summers drives, and it's... Rejected, but they're going to get a foul here on John Wilkins, who's first, and we're going to step aside. 11.42 to go in the first. Illinois State by five. The more the doors open, the more the youth can see a fair chance. Prof here in studio, checking out first round NIT action. Bucknell taking on Arizona over in Tucson. Bryson Johnson, the three from the corner. Up by six. Meanwhile, Nevada and Oral Roberts. Warren Niles. Same spot where Johnson hit from. That's a three. Oral Roberts up by three. Clay? All right, Anish, thank you very much. We're back here in Oxford. And Joe, Arizona's the one seat in this part of the NIT bracket. If uh, Ole Miss wins this game, they'll host here again in round number two against Stanford. If Illinois State were to prevail, they have to go out to the West Coast. Yeah, the uh, obviously the higher seeds host games, except for Dayton. 
was not able to play a home game last night because of the NCAA tournament in their arena, so they had to travel as a two seed out to Iowa, yeah. where they lost to uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes. A little bit tough for them, but yeah, tough luck. Yeah, but. Uh, Really a good tournament. C.M. Newton, the chairman of the selection committee, which is made up of eight former basketball coaches that decide the team, seat them, bracket them, and uh, I think they've done an outstanding job this year. Jarvis Summers, excellent freshman season for the point guard for Ole Miss. Has a bright future on this campus. And he gets both free throws. Free throw shooting Joe has been an Achilles heel, and that might be an understatement for this team. 60% this year last in the SEC. Yeah, last year they led the SEC in free throw shooting. Of course, they had Chris Warren, who was the leading free throw shooter in the nation last season. He's gone, and the Rebels have struggled at the foul line this year. Now they're back 2-3 zone out of the timeout. This is the primary zone they played with when they had so much success at the SEC tournament. Cousin went into the lane and fumbled the ball. Turnovers were not an issue during the Missouri Valley Tournament. Averaged less than seven per game during those three games. Really handled the ball well. Did the Redbirds. And here's, here's the 2-3 zone you see right there. Long, big, and on the penetration, they close it up. Reginald Buckner in the middle gets his hand on the pass and creates the turnover. Allen, that's rolls in touched every part of the rim and goes down from three. Yeah, I asked Tim Jankovic today, I said, you got great shooters where you transition the ball up the floor and take an early three if it's available. And he said, absolutely. And you saw Brian Allen do it right there, wide open, and knock down the three. Already five threes for the Redbirds. They're five of seven. Buckner has it taken away. Carmichael ahead of everybody. Illinois State's brought some fans here tonight behind their bench cheering for their team Gary Friedman the athletic director is here had a good visit with him today it's a big game for Illinois State in the NIT playing an SEC team on the road sequels your biggest lead eight and that's tied up possession arrow favors Ole Miss but Illinois State showing a lot of hustle here early yeah good job trapping on the baseline drive and you see Nick Moore right there stealing the pass and knocking it away for Joe Carmichael to play a little stufferino for the Redbirds Jankovic loves Carmichael just a junior so has another year of eligibility 13 double doubles this year and from the corner what Darius White gets on the board he is coming off a big game at 13 against Bandy in 24 minutes off the bench at the SEC tournament and really starting to play well for the Ole Miss Rebels for Darius White did not play hardly at all in the first half of the season Andy Kennedy inserted him in the lineup later in the year and in the SEC tournament as you mentioned played outstanding especially in the semifinal oh what authority for Carmichael going in with two hands watched Illinois State run their zone offense today in the shoot around they ran that exact play over and over where they get it to Iki on the baseline cut Carmichael right through the heart of the zone for the easy dunk great execution by the Redbirds Summers can't finish New shot clock go for Ole Miss. And Jankovic was telling us as Carmichael hasn't plateaued yet, he's got a lot of upside. Oh, now. yeah, I, I, there's no question about that. Henry, nice spin move. A little strong. Long rebound comes out to Cousin, and he's fouled along the baseline. Or the sideline. That's going to go against Henry, his first. Yeah, you see Illinois say, watch him get the ball down to the baseline, and that forces number four, the middleman, DeMarco Cox, to have to go take that. That opens up the lane on the cut by Jackie Carmichael. Great high-low execution against the Ole Miss zone. This epitomizes a team, Illinois State, nine field goals in this game, seven assists. I can't remember the last time a team has forced Ole Miss out of their zone defense, wow. but Illinois State has done it, and against the man-to-man -man right there, they run great down screens and get the little freshman Nick Moore open for the three. And six of eight now from three. Moore with six points. They are wearing it out here in Oxford. Henry is rejected. That's Wilkins taking a page out of Butler's book. 
Yeah, good penetration by by uh, Terrence Henry, but you see right there, Frenchie, John Wilkins. And Marco Cox is fouled over the back. And he'll get to the free throw line. Wilkins picks up number two. Marco Cox is a big young man, 6'8", 286, sophomore out of Yazoo City, Mississippi. Andy Kennedy talked today about him, and I said, you know, he, he looks like a guy that can maybe play on the Ole Miss football team, and he said he definitely could. They would uh, love an opportunity to big guy like this, but he's got soft hands, getting better. You see Andy Kennedy, five 20 win seasons in his first six years here as the head coach at Ole Miss. DeMarco Cox showing good touch at the line where he is not this year. Just 46 percent on the free throw line, but he makes two there. 26-18, our score, Illinois State leading with just over eight minutes to go here in the first half. Terrence Henry at 6'9", is guarding Nick Moore, the 5'9", point guard. What an interesting matchup that is. Moore goes inside for Carmichael, and he draws the contact. Yeah, Tim Jankovic runs great stuff offensively. A lot of movement in their offense. Good screening down on the baseline. That time got Jackie Carmichael wide open under the goal. Ole Miss was trying to switch that, but couldn't get there in time. And Nick Moore with a nice pass. Carmichael does a great job getting to the free throw line. He has 137 made free throws now, most by an Illinois State player in 11 years. Yeah, and he's been to the line play 191 times, now 192, which is a lot of free throw attempts yeah. and an indication that he is a very aggressive player, taking the ball to the basket, always putting pressure on the defense. We do nine. We're under eight minutes to go here in the first half. It's been a good one for Illinois State. Here's White rising up, jumper from the baseline, rattles it home. Oh, tell you what, he's got five. Yeah, he's going to be a good one, Clay. Young man out of Macomb, Mississippi, down in Pike County on, on the Louisiana line and starting to really come into his own as a freshman. Six foot six, athletic, and as you see, he has knocked down his last two jump shots. There's Brown on the wing. Watched by Murphy Holloway. Cousin now. Brown thought about the three. Seven on the shot clock. Good defense here by Ole Miss. Brown lost his dribble. Two on the shot clock. Thrown up on the run by Cousin. Great D by the Rebs. Best possession of the night defensively by Ole Miss. Good job getting back defensively by Illinois State. No transition baskets allowed by them. White for three. Wow. Got it. That's three of them. What about the Darius White? Well, you love to see a young player like that who didn't get much of an opportunity early come on. And he has really struggled over the course of the entire season from outside of the arc. Just 19% coming into this game, but he's got two big threes here in the half. Brown answers back with a deuce. I'll tell you what, this Illinois State team can flat shoot the basketball. Tim Jankovic told me that on the phone the other night when we talked in preparation for this game, but he is so right. These guys can, can really shoot it. Great form, great technique, and good patience in their offense. Henry, it's bumped into by Cousin, and we've got a timeout on the floor. There's a six-point lead for Jackie Carmichael and the Redbirds in the first round of the NIT from Oxford. Joe Dean Jr. back here in Oxford, Illinois State on the road, doing a great job here tonight, despite the fact that they're missing one of their key contributors. 6'10 freshman center Jordan Treloff broke his thumb before the Missouri Valley Tournament out for 
what amounts to the rest of the year. With that said, this team is shooting 65% right. to start this game. And they need to shoot the ball well because they really miss Jordan Treloff, the guy who's 6'10", 250, would really add a lot in this particular game against an Ole Miss team who's big, bigger, stronger, more physical up front. And Tim Jankovic talked a lot about the loss of Jordan Treloff and, and what that meant to his team tonight. But the guards shooting lights out 64% already in this game by Illinois State from the outside. Almost forced a turnover there. And all but two of the baskets, Joe, have been assisted upon. Exactly. I mean, they're passing yeah. really well. Well, as I mentioned, you know, they really are well coached. I've known Jim, Tim Jankovic a long time. He's been well uh, schooled and, and taught in his basketball background by guys like Bill Self and Kevin Stallings. Eddie Sutton has a great history of uh, in his coaching resume, but they run great action, execute extremely well, and, and very skilled basketball team passing and shooting the ball. There's Iki with another deflection. You know, there's a team that's not big, but they make use of the length that they do have. They're in all the passing ones. No question. And again, the, the coaches that he tutored under did Tim Jankovic were all defensive minded coaches and you see a steal right there by the Redbirds. Brown nice pass and a good block by Henry and this is going to go off Upshaw and Ole Miss has it. A good recovery here by Ole Miss because clearly the steal was effective by Illinois State. Watch the no look. Nice no look right there. And the ball clearly went off number 24, Zeke Upshaw, the 6'6 sophomore out of Chicago. Henry dials up a three from the wing. Got it. Only senior on the Ole Miss team who plays significant minutes, Terrence Henry, which means Ole Miss is going to be very good again next year. But Henry is having an outstanding season for the Rebels and has been invited to the Portsmouth Invitational up in Portsmouth, Ohio, later an NBA tryout tournament. Upshaw trying to answer back. They haven't missed many of those tonight. This is out of bounds. And Illinois State is going to have it. There's a foul here. Iki is going to get to the line. And Summers picks up his first. So Iki going to the line. 76% at the stripe. He's a good outside shooter, too. It seems like they have an endless supply of them. Now he can knock it down. All these players for Illinois State can shoot the basketball. John Eakey, 6'7", redshirt sophomore out of Independence, Missouri, made the Missouri Valley Conference all-scholar team. Very heady young man. He was four of six from outside the arc of the game against Creighton in the Missouri Valley title game, which they almost won. Yes, they did. Tim Jankovic felt like they had a chance to win it. Got beat in overtime. Henry feeling it from that side of the floor, got his own miss. Summers. Great adjustment to finish. Well, that's just a situation where Summers is bigger, about six foot four, than the smaller 5'9 guard Nick Moore for Illinois State. And the crowd get into a little bit. Ole Miss staying in the man-to-man. -man. Nice baseline pass to Upshaw. And the foul. No, no, no. They are going to count it. They are going to count it. And a timeout on the floor. Illinois State 33, Ole Miss 28. Back in a moment. Time, we will take you live to Nevada and Oral Roberts. These two combined for 53 wins in the regular season, and both were regular season conference champs. Clay? All right, Amish. I saw Oral Roberts last week and went 17 and 1 in the Summit League, and they're not dancing. I know it. Interesting. 33 28, Illinois State leading here. Here's a look at another portion of the NIT bracket. Seton Hall, the one seed in this portion and of course northern iowa is a member of the missouri valley conference of which illinois state 
also resides. And that's a good look at Bob Wetlick play, the Ole Miss coach from 76 to 82. He is now part of the selection committee of the NIT. So he actually is here tonight representing the NIT. But Bob Wetlick responsible for the only SEC championship ever at this institution, 1981. Won four games in four days in Birmingham to win the SEC tournament, led by their great point guard, Sean Tuohy. Holloway with a strong backside rebound, Carmichael. This is a well-run tournament because guys like Weltman. Another wow. three. This team seemingly cannot miss from out there. How about They're seven of ten yeah, from three. I was just going to say, seven out of ten, shooting well over 60%. Just an amazing shooting team. That's their M.O. here. You can see why they've won 20 games in a tough Missouri Valley Conference. Born now with nine, all from three. And White, he's been pretty good from out there, too. That's his third three. Yeah, 11 points in the first half of the freshman. Ladarius White continues to grow up and get better and better as he gets more playing time for Andy Kennedy. Illinois State shooting well over 60% here in the half, but their lead is only five, Joe. Exactly. Well, Ole Miss is kind of matching baskets with them here of late. Brown out to Iki. Got it from three. I mean, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible shooting. Eight of 11 from downtown for the Redbirds. Hopping into the lane. They're going to call a charge. Good job by John Eakey. Stepping in the lane and taking that charge. Now Friday, the top wrestlers in the nation hit the mat first at 11 a.m. It's the quarterfinals. Then at 7 Eastern, the semis get underway. The NCAA Division I Wrestling Championships presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car on ESPNU, ESPN3, Friday. March Madness includes the grapplers. Best month of the year, Clay Matthews. You bet. You bet. No doubt. So the lead is eight for Illinois State. There's Zeke with the left hand hook. No. And Buckner with the rebound. Here comes Ole Miss. Henry. Uh, missed everything. Ooh, hustle play there for Buckner. He was trying to save that air ball. Went down hard, but it looks like he's all right. And again, he's, uh, yeah. he's got a tender ankle. He does. Tender ankle and bad knees. And you always hold your breath when you see him dive out of bounds for a loose ball. But he's up and back at him. Andy Kennedy worried about Reginald Buckner, the junior. Under two minutes to go till halftime. What a shooting performance by Illinois State. Tied up on the baseline there is Brown. And this is going to be a jump ball. The session arrow belongs to the Redbirds. A lot of times when teams drive the baseline against the zone, that automatically affects a trapping situation. And we had the trap that time by the Rebels. Tied the ball up there, and uh, Illinois State maintained possession on the possession arrow. Shot clock to 10. Brown hoists up a three, and are you kidding me? Nine of 12. This is unbelievable. Nine of 12 in the first half so far. That's his third triple. The largest lead for Illinois State. It's 11 now. Nice sportsmanship. Nick Moore and Jarvis Summers butted heads. And Nick Moore's got a little buddy, bloody lip, but he turned to Jarvis Summers and said, are you okay? Kind of like that. foul here on Henry and it looks like he took a poke to the eye. Yeah, it would be one thing, you know, Illinois State is shooting 75% from three. It'd be one thing if they were three of four. Oh my goodness. They're nine of 12. Nine of 12 is amazing. Nice spin move right there by Terrence Henry. Six foot nine and, and has great guard type skills. Puts it on the floor. Left-handed shoots the basketball extremely well. Second round action of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship begins tomorrow on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV, noon Eastern time. More information on Turner Game Times at NCAA.com. You and I have both seen Kentucky this year. Is that who you like? That's who I like, Clay. Of course, we've seen Kentucky uh, a lot this year. They are very, very talented, great defensive team. 
Well coached by John Calipari. I just think they're going to be a tough out in this tournament. Jankovic calling the timeout for Illinois State with a minute and 10 to go here in the half. I can't disagree with you. But there are a lot of good teams. Michigan State is a team that uh, John Calipari mentioned to us that he had tremendous respect for and was worried uh, that he wasn't going to be in the same region with them. He's not, obviously, since they're a number one seed. But you've got North Carolina, Syracuse, Kansas, uh, all good. Missouri, very good. Vanderbilt playing extremely yeah. well. I like Vanderbilt joining in this tournament. Illinois State, they're 9 of 12 from outside the arc of the half. Yeah, Brian Allen with the three. You see right there, Tyler Brown. That was the first shot of the game, I believe. And then Nick Moore, the 5'9 freshman out of Warsaw, Indiana. Illinois State playing some string music here in Oxford, Mississippi, Clay. First time taking shots in this building, yeah. obviously, and adjusting just fine. This is a good shooting building. I've always thought that. It's not, not a big arena. It seats about 10,000, maybe a little less. And uh, depth perception behind the baskets is good with the dark blue seats. Allen jumper short. And the belongs to a miss with 45 seconds to go in the half. Illinois State really sets good screens in their motion offense. They go and head on to the defender, knock him off balance, freeing up their shooters outside, and of course on the miss, Carmichael crashing the offensive board. Little zone trap right here by Tim Jankovic on the last possession of the half. Nice change. Henry. Line drive short. Wow, what a great, great play by Nick Moore. He was blocking out 6'9", 235-pound Reginald Buckner. Nick Moore is 5'9", 170 pounds. Watch this block out. That is unbelievable right there. Look at that. Look at that. And just scraps, gets it, and then draws the foul from Buckner going for the loose ball. Tremendous play by Nick Moore. Shot clock is off. Illinois State can take the final shot and have a double-digit lead at halftime, it would appear. Allen bombed going in. So Bryant Allen will get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity here for Illinois State with 4.3 left. Yeah, tough foul for Ole Miss right there on the drive. That's the seventh team foul, which will send the sophomore Bryant Allen out of Maplewood, Minnesota. Excuse me, Maplewood, Missouri. To the free throw line. Had a career high 29 points against Creighton back on January 13th. Good look at Tim Jankovic there. Former head coach at North Texas State. Assistant at Vandy, Illinois, a year with Bill Self and came to Illinois State from an assistant's position at Kansas. Uh, that's an inadvertent horn. Not sure why that horn went off. It was a, it was a late horn for the substitution, apparently. And so Ole Miss is going to have to come back down to the end of the floor. We'll see if they reset the clock. I would think so, they, right? They, they should reset it to 4.3, yes. Officials are over there taking a look at it to make sure they get it right. The officials just did not see the substitute at the scores table and allowed Ole Miss to throw the ball in after the made free throw. Then that's when the scorekeeper buzzed the horn to try to get the atten attention of the officials so the sub could come into the game. There's Raina Tilly over to talk to Andy Kennedy. Here's a look at the clock. And remember, the clock does not start until the ball is touched inbounds. So right there. Yeah, sub is over on the sideline. You can see him right there near the half-court line. They're going to set the clock back to 4.3. And it gives Illinois State a chance to set up in a full-court press, which they'll do right now. A 2, -two one zone press. They're going to try to force Ole Miss to take a lot of time getting the ball down the court. Buckner gets it in. Summers hoists it up at the horn. 
And Illinois State leads it by a dozen at the half. The most points Illinois State has scored in a half this season. And look at their shooting. Nine of 13 from three. Well, they've run great offense and gotten great shots, but they have outstanding shooters who are wearing it out here tonight in Oxford. 44-32 the score at the half. Illinois State with a nice lead. Now we go to the studio. Anish Shroff and Adrian Branch. All right, thank you, Clay. We're going to take you live. Nevada's got eight points in the first half for the Rebels. they got to show more cause in the second half. Vermont and gets Temple in the round of 64. But Illinois State, 9 of 13 from deep in the first half. Up to 12. Illinois State. Getting it done from the field 60% in the first half. The Redbirds up a dozen on the Reds. First round of the NIT from Oxford, Mississippi. The seven seed Illinois State with a beautiful first half. Shot 60%, 69% from three. The lead is a dozen as we get ready to start the second half. Alongside Jodine Jr., I'm Clay Matvick. What adjustments do you expect the Rebels to make? They've got to defend the three. I mean, it's pretty clear. 9 out of 13 by Illinois State. And Ole Miss had a hard time getting through screens. Illinois State, a lot of movement. they got to work harder, help each other out, and force Illinois State to put the ball on the floor and try to take it in the lane where Ole Miss has the size advantage. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. And Illinois State actually tried early on to battle inside, but then they realized it wasn't working and shifted gears. Yeah, every time they got it in the lane and tried to get it into the basket, they uh, turned the ball over. You see the rebound by Carmichael right there, knocked away, and it led to easy baskets at the other end for the Ole Miss Rebels. But after that, they got screens outside, and Tyler Brown played a little string music here in the Tad Pad. He was four of five from three-point range, and also Bryant Allen, the left-hander, knocked down to three. As we mentioned, oh, uh, Illinois State, nine of 13 from three-point range. Unbelievable shooting in that first half. Point well, touched up before, Joe. They had 15 baskets. 13 assists yeah. in the first half. Yeah, they run their offense extremely well and very unselfish. That's the first basket of the game for t uh, Murphy Holloway, the 6'7 junior, who is a big part of the Ole Miss team. Looked like he came down on his ankle bad. He's, he's limping a little bit. Brown. Boy, pick up right where they left off. Brown. Now with 17. Now Holloway is definitely limping. Tyler Brown, of course, continues to wear it out. Five of six. Came into the game a 41% three-point shooter. Obviously, he's done that all year. Three. Bangs on for Jarvis Summers. And likewise, Jarvis Summers is the leading three-point shooter for the Rebels at 42% coming in. The freshman out of Jackson. Now Carmichael gets loose. Can't flush the duck. And Holloway comes away with the rebound. Yeah, missed opportunity. I think Carmichael just relaxed a little bit, thinking he had it made. Can't ever take baskets for granted. Summers, quick start to his second half. He had a good first half passing the basketball with seven assists. Now getting into the scoring column with effect. And the lead is eight now for Illinois State. Brown on the baseline. The perimeter. Here's Moore. He falls down. He was tripped. Now the, the fans do not like the call. Patrick Evans, an SEC official, made that call. We've got a mixed crew tonight, Clay. Uh, the, we've got one official from the ACC, one from the SEC I just mentioned, and one from Conference USA. A little bit of a mixed bag, but three good officials here tonight. Jim Jankovic is taking a look at Tyler Brown. Well, I tell you, they can't afford to lose him. He looks like he has twisted his left ankle. Yeah, he's going to come out, yeah, at least is, for now. Anthony Cousin is checking in. I tell you what, that could be a major blow in this game if Tyler Brown, you see his numbers there, unbelievable tonight. And uh, if he can't come back, hopefully maybe that's just a cramp. That's what we'll, we'll hope for. He averaged a team-high 16 points per game during the Valley Tournament. 
critical to their play then, and he has been so far tonight. Here's Cousin in the paint for Carmichael back on the perimeter. Allen falls down, doesn't get it to go. This is a chance here to continue to cut in this Illinois State lead. It was 12 at the half. Henry, strong move on the block and one. That was a set play call by Andy Kennedy from the bench. It's a slashing play where they isolate Terrence Henry on the left side of the lane. And he right now is isolated on 5'11", Anthony Cousin. That's a mismatch. Used his 6'9 frame to get it up on the banking board and into the basket. Nice execution by the Ole Miss offense right there. And missed the free throw. But Terrence Henry in double figures now at 10. Leading six for the Redbirds. They might run that play all night because Illinois State is going to have a small player on Henry. More nice pass to Wilkins in the finish. We'll see if they run this play again or if Illinois State to tries to zone a little bit. They're staying man, and you've got a you got the 5'10 cousin on 6'9 Henry right here. Henry goes right to the rack and slams it down. Tim Jankovic is going to have to figure out an adjustment right there. They'll go to Henry every time down with that kind of a size mismatch defensively. Allen lobbed it up. Holloway plucks it out of the air. Here comes Ole Miss. Williams for three. No, Buckner again goes hard down to the deck. And Ole Miss has the basketball, but looked like he got pushed. That did. And it looked like the ball went out on Buckner, so the officials decided. Let's just give Ole Miss the ball, not call a foul on Illinois State, which is probably a good call. Look at, there's the mismatch inside. There he is. Now the double. What well, he was triple team. Yeah, too late. Time. Terrence Henry, six points here in the half. Great job by Ole Miss. Andy Kennedy and the team recognizing that mismatch going to Terrence Henry. Three straight times now for baskets. Summers. Williams gets it back out on the perimeter. Here comes the same play. Henry traveling. Good help right there by Carmichael. Stepped in front. Impeded the pass of Terrence Henry there. But again, you can see what all this is doing. Every time they're going to go to him play it's very clear he's the small forward for the rebels at 6 9 they got to have one of their guards from illinois state cover him because murphy holloway and reginald butler are so big and physical inside andy kennedy sends ladarius white and aaron jones into the game jones in for the first time good to see tyler brown yeah. back on the floor i think he had a cramp in his calf i believe that's what it was it looks good That's John Buckner, his second. Terrence Henry has 14 for Ole Miss. They made it a four-point game. Ole Miss trailed by 12 at the half. It's been cut to four. Tricks of the trade, and boy, Henry has uh, been turning the trick here the last few trips down the floor for the Rebels. Yeah, well, they recognized the mismatch when Anthony Cousin, 5'11", came out to guard the 6'9", small forward, Terrence Henry. Andy Kennedy went to him three straight trips down. He scored all three times, then turned it over trying to go by Cousin, and uh, that's an interesting situation for Tim Jankovic. You'll have to keep an eye on that. 
because he plays three small guards, and one of those three small guards has got to guard the small forward, Terrence Henry, and it's caused him problems here the last several minutes. Carmichael at the line. Illinois State hasn't been getting the outside shots that they were getting with regularity in that first half here, at least in the early going of the second half, Joe. No, you know that's that was the point of emphasis at halftime by Andy Kennedy, and they've tightened up their perimeter defense to try to shut down some of those good looks for Illinois State. McWilliams. White bottled it, and Moore takes it away. Moore to the trailer, and slammed down by Wilkins. Lucky break for the Redbirds right there. The ball got knocked away on the two-on-one, but Frenchie Wilkins was trailing the play, opportunistic to get it and lay it in. His dad, Jeff, an All-American at Illinois State back in the late 70s. Jump shot doesn't go for Henry. Tim Jankovic from the bench, calling out a play. A more measured call on this trip down the floor for Illinois State. A lot of ball screens. Out front. Nice hit Carmichael when he screens and rolls down toward the baseline. Look at all the guys he has worked for. You mentioned the teams with Eddie Sutton on, Kruger, Bill Self, and this is a well-coached Redbirds team. No question. That was the previous fast break that was... Loose ball knocked off an Ole Miss player, and Frenchie Wilkins, John Wilkins, got the ball laid in. But you're right, he, he's worked for Eddie Sutton, Lon Kruger, Gene Iva, Boyd Grant, Bill Self, Kevin Stallings. <laughs> All great so college basketball coaches. Quick hands by Summers. He'll take it himself, can't get it to go. Jones can't put it back. He got his own miss. Jones working hard, gets to the line. Aaron Jones, the freshman who always seems to give that kind of effort when he's on the floor. Yeah, Andy Kennedy talked a lot about Aaron Jones today and also Ladarius White, his two freshmen who have gotten a lot more playing time here late in the season and are starting to respond, play well, get more comfortable in the game and developing a lot of confidence as young players. That's the third on Brown. So he's the first player for Illinois State in any kind of foul trouble. They've got to keep him on the floor. He has just been lights out tonight. Tyler Brown from the outside. It is five for Illinois State. It's amazing. Ole Miss has, has played primarily zone defense the last three weeks of this season. Not tonight, not against a shooting team like the Redbirds. Illinois State's going to keep it on the possession arrow, but Iki was tied up nicely. You could say really, Clay, that Illinois State has forced their will on Ole Miss and, and forcing them to have to play the man-to-man, -man, run off a lot of screens, a lot of movement in the Illinois State offense. Brown, boy, off the screen. Plenty of room to operate, and when this team has room to shoot, we have seen how dangerous they can be. Another three for Brown. That's his sixth. Well, I'll tell you, young men who grow up in the Midwest have great skills, been well taught. They shoot it well. Great fundamentals. Summers with a three of his own, his second of the half. Robert Summers grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, but he's got good touch, good form, and technique as well. Great backdoor, Iggy with a two-hand jam. You know, just a, a defensive breakdown by Ole Miss. Two players went to the ball on the screen, and Iki wide open when he rolled to the basket. He made a nice game here. First round of the NIT from Oxford. Jump shot, Williams is strong. Brown with the rebound for the Redbirds. Here they come. Leaving seven and more will pull it back out. Under 13 minutes to go. They want to force Ole Miss to go off a lot of these screens. Players running side to side off of screens to get themselves open. Look at that. 
Wow. Iki finishes. Boy, there was some tough defense in there by Ole Miss. Iki's man went to help on the screen, and he just slipped right to the basket. Wide open. Rolls off. Numbers for Illinois State. Brown. Got the three. Timeout, Andy Kennedy. 12.22 to go, and Illinois State showing no signs of cooling off from outside the arc. Tyler Brown, 23 points, 7 of 8 from outside the arc. The team as a whole shooting 71% from three-point land, and here is Brown at his best. Brown hands the ball off right there to number 11, Nick Moore. Now watch him go to the other side of the floor and then circle all the way back, get a down screen from Iki. His man gets hung up, knocks down the three. Tremendous movement without the ball and offensive execution. We've kind of done this a few times throughout the night. Illinois State, their field goals and their assists. 22 field goals, 20 helpers. Yep. Only six turnovers. That's an indication of how well they are executing their offense, running their screens, running ball screens, getting catches and shots off of assists. 20 assists on 22 field goals. That's unbelievable. White rattles down another bucket as Ole Miss is trying to stay in this game, even though Illinois State at times has threatened to run away and hide. This goes to show you Ole Miss is the bigger, more physical, more athletic team, but a smaller, quicker team that executes well can take the lead in a game like this. Good job. Holloway forced that turnover, tries to finish. Tipped in by Buckner. That's his first basket here tonight. And that's the advantage Ole Miss has inside with their size and physical strength. After a single digit lead, Brown tried it again from this win now. <laughs> Brown looked over at us. I thought he was going to give us a little Michael Jordan where he did his hands, you know, like Jordan did in the finals that year to Magic Johnson. We didn't get the hands, but we did get an eyeball <laughs> from Tyler Brown. Like, am I on fire or what? Yes, sir, Tyler Brown, you are. Answering back is Ladarius White on the baseline. Career high for him, I believe, right, Clay? Got to be. Having a great night, the freshman from Macomb, Mississippi, Ladarius White. A lot of offense. If you like offense, you you tuned into the right game tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Offensive foul on the Browns. The Redbirds will turn it over, but Brown, the story in this one, he is eight of nine from three, but he just picked up his fourth personal. That be brewing in Tucson. Bucknell is leading by five over Arizona currently that game on ESPN2. Oral Roberts and Nevada playing right now on ESPN3. Stanford advancing last night with a win over Cleveland State. The winner of this game will play the Cardinal. Hey, what that makes this game that much more important for Ole Miss if they want to get back to New York City in the Final Four which Andy Kennedy has done twice in his Ole Miss career, 2008 and 2010, took his Rebels to the Final Four in New York City. And yeah. if Arizona were to lose, that would yeah. give them home court throughout, but they've got their hands full tonight with a yeah. gritty Illinois State team. Boy, strong move by Holloway, count it, and he'll get to the line. I'll tell you what, Kennedy deserves a lot of credit for holding this thing together. Well, no question about it, Murphy Holloway didn't score in the first half, and that time got him isolated on a smaller player and drove it right past Iki using that physical strength to get it in. Three-point play for Holloway. You think about what Kennedy has had to deal with. Dundrickus Nelson, Jamal Jones dismissed in December. Recently, Jalon Kendrick kicked off the team. Here they are in the postseason, no despite point. all of that. Yeah, they, and as you mentioned, they, they were in the conversation late for the NCAA, but couldn't knock off Vanderbilt in the semifinals of the SEC tournament. Andy Kennedy really done a good job with this particular Ole Miss team. And we talked with him a lot today about what the future holds. They lose Terrence Henry, have a lot of guys coming back, already signed two really good players in the November signing period. And he just got a commitment 
recently from a junior college player out of Texas named Marshall Henderson, who, who he says might be the junior college player of the year. He's a 6'2 guard that can flat shoot the basketball, which is what Ole Miss needs. This is going to be a good competitive team again in the SEC next year. Those were the first points for Carmichael in the second half for Illinois State. Lead it by eight now, foul here on Eakin. And again, you know, this time, uh, Brian Allen at six feet tall is assigned to cover 6'9", Terrence Henry, and uh, holding him as he cuts up through the lane. They're going to try to isolate Henry every chance they get on Allen. Excuse me, I said Eki, I meant Allen, and that's his first. And there is Allen with the quick hands, can't get the steal. When you give up nine inches, what do you do? You try to play denial defense, get in the passing lane. The man who played football at the University of Minnesota was a defensive back. Ten minutes to go. Holloway rolling to the hoop foul. And that time it will be on Eakin. His first. Nick Moore was in position to help on that drive and possibly take a charge, but he recovered back to his man and allowed Holloway to get all the way into the lane and drew the foul from Eakin. You know, you got to think that Ole Miss would have had a hard time finishing as strong as they did and making it to the NIT again this year without this guy. No question about it. Of course, it's been well documented. Murphy Holloway played his first two years here at Ole Miss, then transferred to South Carolina. He's from Irmo, South Carolina, to be closer to his family. Had some family issues he had to deal with. At the end of the transfer year last summer, he decided he wanted to come back to Ole Miss. The NCAA granted that transfer back did not make him sit out again, and he has flourished this year as a junior for Andy Kennedy's team. Good rebound by Buckner. Fresh shot clock here for Ole Miss. Down seven. Holloway from the corner. No. Wilkins trying to get that rebound. Kicked it away. And Summers scoops it up. Henry driving. And a foul here on Wilkins. I tell you what, you, you saw the, the strength of the Ole Miss front line. Here's Henry. He knows that Bryant Allen cannot stop him or contest him when he gets it inside. And then Buckner and Holloway just force their strength inside, the, their power physically. Buckner in particular to get to the offensive board and draw that foul. That's what Tim Jankovich talked a lot about with me that he was really worried about the, the size and the strength of the Ole Miss front line. In and out for Buckner. A balance that Illinois State has it. The crowd disapproves. Goes inside to Carmichael, rejected by Buckner. Got the ball where they wanted, but the physical size of Ole Miss won the battle there. And Henry to finish on the other end. And the lead is five. Here comes the crowd. And a foul. Murphy Holloway, his second. You see the movement by the Redbirds, and that time the pass inside, and a great rejection on the help by Reginald Buckner against Jackie Carmichael. And again, we've talked a lot about Terrence Henry. You see the dexterity, 6'9", put it on the floor, and the finish at the rim. A good defensive play here as Ole Miss has dialed it up. Buckner, the... Leading shot blocker in Ole Miss history. His defense led to the offense for Henry. That's a five-point game. Yeah, 262 blocks in his career for Reginald Buckner. 
Ole Miss is in the 2 3 zone. Holloway slaps it out of bounds. 18 on the shot clock. Jackie Carmichael just told Nick Moore fake it high and bounce pass it underneath the hands of the defender. Talking fundamentals out on the floor. Impressive. Tend to shoot. Allen. Five on the shot clock. No. And Buckner goes up for the rebound. Henry. Good pass. Holloway. The finish. And just like that. It's a three-point game. Jankovic calls a timeout for Illinois State. All of Holloway's points have come here in the second half. He's got eight. In the last possession, Illinois State decided to double-team Terrence Henry when they threw the ball into the low post. And that opened up the cut for Holloway down the lane for the layup. A 10-2 run for Ole Miss, which has not enjoyed a trip to the NCAA tournament since 2002, Joe. But another deep NIT run would do wonders for Andy Kennedy's program well, this no, year. No question. And, and when you look at players like Ladarius White, the freshman Aaron Jones, also a freshman. Jarvis Summers, a freshman. Uh, those three young men could use more practice time, more game competition, because as I mentioned, they hadn't played a lot other than Summers. They haven't played a lot until the latter part of the season, as you see the recent NIT appearances for Ole Miss. Twice, 08 in 2010, got beaten the semifinals of this tournament. Watch to Cal in the first round on the road last year, trying to avoid getting knocked off the first round this year. Carmichael picked it up off the floor after he bobbled it. And his foul going to the rack. 7.47 to go. We've got a three-point game now. Tightened up here in Oxford. The Rebels were down a dozen at the break. And they pulled it within three with 7.47 to go here in this first round NIT game. Coming telecasts for the NIT. Seton Hall will host UMass on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Of course, UMass getting by Mississippi State. Middle Tennessee at Tennessee. Interesting matchup. Got to say this again. Conso Martin has done an outstanding job with the Volunteers. They almost went dancing. Tremendous uh, freshman journal. You're right about Conso Martin. Middle Tennessee State University out of Murfreesboro, right near Nashville, will go cross-state to play the big state university. Kermit Davis, Jr., the Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year, regular season champs in the Sun Belt, 26 wins. They're going to go to Knoxville with some confidence and thinking they can knock off the big brother in the state. This Carmichael at the line. This is the front end, has another one coming. Talked about how he gets to the line a lot. But tonight at the strike, not faring very well. It's four of eight in total. But a great job out of the timeout by Tim Jankovic to run that set play to get the ball deep to their best player, Carmichael, who drew the foul there. There's the double. You see the, the adjustment made on Terrence Henry to help the shorter Bryant Allen defensively. Summers. Wow, taken right away from by uh, Carmichael. Great job defensively by the big man. Carmichael's all over the floor defensively, helping out. That time helped out on that drive and literally just took the ball out of the air from Jarvis Summers. in this game for the Redbirds, matching a season high. Nick Moore was runner-up for Indiana Mr. Basketball to Cody Zeller, the star for Indiana University. Tremendous freshman point guard. Henry. And 
coming away with it is Cousin. The lead is seven with six and a half to go. And you can see that Illinois State has never been intimidated against the SEC. 5-0. and oh. Unbelievable. Moore trying it again. Oh, my goodness. This is unconscious. That is 15 three-point baskets in this game. 15 for the Illinois State Redbirds. Unbelievable. 15 for 20. Another timeout called by Andy Kennedy. He has two remaining. And the lead is back to 10. <laughs> Watch this. Just rises up uncontested. Nick Moore, 5'9", 170 pound freshman, Warsaw, Indiana. Plays a little string music here. In the Tad Pad in Oxford, the, the Redbirds, 15 out of 20 from downtown. There you see it. 10 of 21. I mean, they just hadn't shot it well at all from two-point range. Only 10 of 21. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you said it earlier that this building always yeah. has been a pretty good shooter's I've always, building. I've always felt that way. With that said, it's the first time any of these guys have probably been in this building. There's still an adjustment, but it doesn't seem like it's affected these guys. Well, they, as I mentioned earlier, you know, from a fundamental standpoint, you know, they have great form, great technique in their shot, and they know they're good shooters. They they think every time they shoot it, it's going to go in. Holloway got it in the foul. That's exactly what Ole Miss needed out of the timeout. Now you see the great coaching. You know, out of the timeout, they go to their best inside strength. Percy Holloway, isolate him on the left side, takes it right to the goal, uses the banking board to get it in. There's the isolation. Carmichael late getting there. Holloway too strong. That's the eighth team foul on Illinois State. Mm. Eight point game. Under six to go. The foul trouble here. Brown with four. Wilkins three now. For Illinois State, turnover. White was hot early from outside, takes it inside, and he'll get a three-point opportunity. Now I know he's got a career high. I was wrong, 16 the previous, that makes it 17. And watch him go draw the contact. This is impressive for a freshman. He goes right in, takes it right to the red shirt, draws the contact, gets the ball into the basket, and you see John Wilkins didn't like that call. But a great play by Ladarius White. Back to a five-point difference. Crowd amping up again. Kids are on break here at Ole Miss, but still a pretty good contingent of fans here to watch this first round NIT game. Moore drops it down. Wilkins, sky hook. No. Belongs to the Redbirds. Great job by Carmichael getting on the glass and keeping that ball alive for his team. Carmichael's a very good basketball player, very athletic. Kind of battle by himself inside against all those big physical Ole Miss front line players. Ole Miss zones on the out of bounds, 2 3. Jarvis Summers and Ladarius White are thinking that's their 63. It's like they didn't realize they've been shooting it well all night. They just walked away from him. He is five for five from three. I want to guard him. Holloway lost it going up and he was fouled by Carmichael and that's the fourth on Carmichael. You know, it's just what we talked about in the one-on-one. -on -one. It's the, the physical size and strength of Ole Miss around the basket against the outside shooting of Illinois State. It's almost to a T what our one-on-one -on -one was tonight, as you see Illinois State. Tim Jankovic, the three-point numbers, season high, 16 of them here. Tyler Brown is checking in for Illinois State. I thought the foul was on Carmichael. Who'd they call it on? 
Well, yeah, I think they are going to call it on Brown here. Uh, does that foul him out? Is that his fifth? If it is on Brown, that's his fifth. Wow, that's a tough loss. Let's watch. Murphy Holloway just trying to muscle his way in. Oh, my goodness. They call that on Brown? Wow. I thought it was on 32 Carmichael. And yeah, Carmichael's we all to, did. Yeah, watch, watch number one. This is who the foul's on. I guess he touched his elbow. Yeah, I guess that was the call right there. So Brown fouls out. And what a game it's been for Brown. 26 points, a career high. You know, and that's probably a nickel-dime call. I agree. But when you have four fouls and you're the best shooter on your team, you shouldn't even put your hand in there. You know, you should know better than that when you have four fouls. And just a tough mental, mental mistake right there by Tyler Brown, who's played a great basketball game tonight. He's only missed one field goal attempt. He's 9 of 10 from the field, 8 of 9 from 3. But his night is done prematurely. 4.40 to go. And... You gotta make the free throws. It's been a problem all year for Ole Miss. 60 percent as a team. You know, and it could be a blessing in disguise play because John Eakey gives them a little bigger front line. Six seven. He will be assigned to guard Terrence, Hall Terrence Henry, who has given the Redbirds some problems on the offensive end. Ole Miss nine of 17 at the line as Holloway missed them both. That's been their MO all year. Very poor free throw shooting team all year, the Ole Miss Rebels. Crowd wanted to travel on Allen, no whistle. There's Zeke. His sky hook rattles home, big basket to make it a 10 point game again. Beautiful, I'm absolutely sensational play. And again, I think this could be a blessing in disguise for Illinois State, having a little more size on the floor. Foul on Ole Miss. I'm not sure who. 3.59 to go. It's a 10 point game as Henry just picked up his fourth. Four minutes to go. What a display by Illinois State. So good that even the officials are making jokes about it. <laughs> no question. Yeah. I tell you, one of the reasons why they get open so much is they, they really cut hard and with a lot of speed. You don't see them jogging through their offense. And right there, that's just a defensive breakdown between the two guards out front. I think one thought he had him, the other one thought the other guy had him. They both backed off, and they allowed Nick Moore to knock down the three, who's five for five in the game. Tyler Brown, eight for nine. How about your two starting point guards, Clay? 13 of 14 on the game from three. That's going to win you a lot of basketball games. Now, Brown is out now. He fouled out. But this team, 76% from outside the arc. One of the officials stopped by our table and yeah. just made a crack. He said, boy, they shoot it just like me. <laughs> Patrick <laughs> Evans, who was a good basketball player in, in his day. They go back inside now. Carmichael's touched going up, so he'll get to the line. Well, you remember earlier in the game, Carmichael shot a fadeaway jumper that tickled the twine. And so Murphy Holloway went out there to try to contest that this time and hit Carmichael on the elbow. That's the second on Holloway. Carmichael does just enough inside to keep Ole Miss honest. Friday, the top wrestlers in the nation hitting the mat, 11 a.m. Quarterfinals, 7 Eastern, the semis, the NCAA Division I Wrestling Championships presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. One for Carmichael at the line. It's 79-68. This is going to be a big possession right here for the Rebels. Ten points down. They really need to score right here, or Illinois State will start to take the ball, the air out of the, out of the clock here. Williams for three. No. Rebound, White. His shot was partially blocked. Yeah, Illinois State will not be in any hurry right now. They're going to run clock. Take care of the ball. Force Ole Miss to play defense. They zoned the last possession, too, which I thought was very smart. Most threes in a game for this program in 16 years. And who's got it? Ole Miss does. Turned over. 16 threes tonight for Tim Jankovic's team. 
And let's see it. Tim Jankovic thought Ole Miss tipped that ball on the pass from Carmichael. Fisher was right on top of it. Summers, wide open was Holloway. All of his points coming here since halftime. He's got a dozen. To steal. Look out below. And again, every time Illinois State threatens to run away and hide, here comes Ole Miss. It's back to a seven point game. Still plenty of time. 2.18 to go here in Oxford. Just poor ball handling by Illinois State the last two trips. Well, Irvin, all the way again, good defense. More fouled by Holloway. Well, what, 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 That's his here. third. Um, the US That's the 18 foul on Ole Miss. It's going to game become game? a game of free throw shooting for Illinois State. Nick Moore at the line, the freshman, 82%. Most youngsters that grow up in the state of Indiana can shoot the basketball. And Nick Moore is no exception. Oh, out. A big miss. Jinxed him. And White goes up I know, I know to pull it out of the air. Yeah, Under two fine. minutes to go. Yeah. Three on the way. Yes! And Darius White, his fourth of the game. Boy, he's been good tonight. No question. He's going to be a really good player in this program at Ole Miss. And it, it took him about three months to figure that out. Now a foul here on Summers. That's his third. And going to the line again is Moore. I'm going to say it again. Nick Moore, 82% free throw shooter. Most kids that grow up in Indiana are very good shooters. <laughs> there we go. Second round action of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship against tomorrow on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV at noon Eastern. And the reason I know that, Clay, my dad grew up in Indiana, <laughs> and he would tell you he was the greatest shooter that ever lived. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still is. Hey, your dad's in great shape. Yeah, he really is. For 81, absolutely. White for three. That block. That time it was blocked by Carmichael. Comes out to Summers. He'll hoist the three. And a timeout on the floor. The winner of this game will play Stanford. Wow, how about that? Bucknell upsets Arizona in Tucson. Nevada wins on the road as well at Oral Roberts. That's unbelievable. And we've got a road team tonight who's winning Illinois State. If Ole Miss can figure out a way to win this game, they would have home court the rest of the way because Arizona now is out. Ole Miss has climbed back in as you look at the situation here. The timeouts remaining. Three for Illinois State, just one for Andy Kennedy's squad. Possession arrow favors the Rebels. They are down three with a minute 20 to go. They trailed by as many as 12 here in the second half. Well, they fought back. They've uh, taken it to the basket. Murphy Holloway has come alive in the second half. And then Ladarius White and Jarvis Summers, two freshmen, both from the state of Mississippi, have shot the ball extremely well to bring the Rebels back. Darius White, one point off of his career high, a big reason that Ole Miss has snuck back into this one. Pull within three. And he's going to sit down here. You know, this is a defensive substitution right here. He's, as I mentioned, hadn't played a lot this year. Started to play a lot here the last couple of weeks. So Andy Kenny's got his veteran defensive players, Nick Williams, the junior, much better defender to try to shut down this Illinois State offense. Cousin trying to hand 
handoff for Carmichael, loose on the floor, and taken away by Ole Miss. Williams from three. Yes! We're tied up. And a foul here on the Rebels. I do not understand what Reginald Buckner was doing right there. You're tied in the game. 41 seconds to go. And on the screen, there's the turnover the previous play. Great hustle by Ole Miss. And Nick Williams, who had been cold on the bench, comes off the bench for defensive purposes and makes the biggest shot of the game for the Ole Miss Rebels. But to go back, why Buckner's going to foul an 82% foul shooter with the game tied is absolutely beyond me. And Buckner is on the bench now. That three-point basket for Williams, his first points since there was 16 minutes left in the first half. And Darius White is taking his playing time tonight by shooting so well and playing well, but they brought Nick Williams back in for defense. He got the steal and the three-pointer at the other end. Big free throws for Moore to put Illinois State back up by two with 41.5 to go. Now... Andy Kennedy will talk defensive strategy. He still has one timeout remaining. Two timeouts left for Illinois State. Well, the Redbirds almost won the Missouri Valley in St. Louis. They played Creighton. 14 lead changes in the game. Nick Moore tied it at 65 with five seconds left. But the Redbirds didn't get a foul call that would have given a, a chance to win the title with a free throw. Doug McDermott. And a game high 33 for Creighton, which got the automatic bid out in the Missouri Valley. Wichita State was an at-large for the big dance. Tim Jankovic said today he had been in the Big 12, he'd been in the SEC, but he said the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament has the same atmosphere as up. those power conferences do. And uh, Arch Madness, they call it every year, in St. Louis. This is Andy Kennedy's bread and butter play. The isolation on the left side of the floor for the left-hander, Terrence Henry, against the smaller. Actually, John Wilkins at 6'9 was a good defensive coverage there, but Henry rose up, used the glass, got it in. Chance to take the lead. Big make for him. What a comeback by the Rebels. Buckner will come back in for White. Ole Miss was down 13 yep. in this game. And has trailed almost the entire game, if I remember. Let's see if they're going to stay in their man-to-man. -man. They have put Illinois State on the foul line almost every trip down in the last three or four minutes. Defensively, Ole Miss right now wants to force Illinois State to take a shot where they can rebound the miss. And a timeout called by Andy Kennedy. Now he's pleading with his guys right now. I don't think he has any. Uh, he may have one timeout left. But he's going to talk about defending without fouling. That is the message right now. Defend without fouling. Illinois State on the ball game has only gotten three offensive rebounds in the whole game. Obviously, if Ole Miss can get a missed shot, they can control the rest of the time in the game. So now Ole Miss is out of timeouts. Yeah, they still had one on the bar there when, yeah. I, when I said I thought they had one. Now there's none left. There we go. So that's it for the Rebels. 29 seconds to go. Illinois State will have it. Here's the key. The Illinois State runs great half-court offense with hard, fast cuts. They, they, they've been getting open looks all night. Let's see if they try to go inside right here to Carmichael, who's isolated down low on Murphy Holloway. Jankovic trying to get him to move it. Moore 
comes out to Carmichael. 11 seconds to play. Cousin to the hoop. Blocked again by Buckner. And a foul called. That is going to be on Buckner. And Cousin will go to the line. Well, the defensive intensity was unbelievable. Look at Murphy Holloway. Ole Miss could not secure the miss. And right there, yeah, there's the body that knocked down Anthony Cousin, the 5'11 junior from Anchorage, Alaska. Cousin has another foul shot coming. White ready to check back in. We've got a timeout called, though, by Tim Jankovic. Well, the Ole Miss defense out front was crowding Illinois State and forcing them to put it on the floor. And Cousins saw the opening play, drove it right to the basket. Nice job by him. And he drew the foul. He's a 79% free throw shooter, but hadn't been to the line this not and at one time this entire game. And a lot of times when you're cold in that situation, you have a hard time under pressure making the shot. And it's interesting that Cousins' hands. He hasn't scored a point tonight. Right. And so many other guys have been red hot for the Redbirds. Exactly. It was just a scramble situation off of the, the Murphy Holloway block. Illinois State was rushing with the shot clock running down, and the ball ended up in Cousins' hands. But Cousin is a almost an 80% free throw shooter, so you would think percentage-wise you're in pretty good shape. We'll see if he can tie this game right here. I'm a little bit surprised that Tim Jankovic is taking all of his rebounds off the lane here. Got it. We're tied. Ole Miss out of timeouts. Wilkins comes back in for Illinois State. Illinois State's going to stay in a zone. 2 3 zone right here. Summers. 3 2 puts up the shot. No. And we're going to overtime. Summers with his head down, a little bit disappointed at himself, but Ole Miss with a ferocious comeback here in the second half. They were down 13, and now we're going to overtime. This game is very similar. As we look at the last shot, you see Summers is going coast to coast. He doesn't care what defense they're in. He actually got a pretty good look right there from about eight feet, but couldn't get it in. This game very similar to what we saw last night in Starkville yep. with uh, UMass leading the entire game, dominating Mississippi State, who turned it up in the last five minutes and caught UMass to send it to overtime. And then UMass actually won it in double overtime last night. Last night tied at 72, debossed. You mentioned a chance to win at the end of the regulation. Missed the layup in the first overtime. Jalen Steele hit a three-pointer with 21 seconds left at OT. Tied up at 90. But from there, it was all UMass as they outscored Mississippi State in the second overtime as Chaz Williams led the Minutemen with 28. And they're on to the second round of the NIT. Rick Stansberry, just a depressing finish to his year, to the Bulldogs' year. It's going to be interesting to see what that team looks like next year, personnel-wise. Yeah, it will. There's speculation that Sidney might not return. Arnett Moultrie will have a decision to make if he wants to turn pro. D. Boss, the great point guard, is yeah. gone. He was a senior. So uh, it will be interesting to see how Mississippi State uh, does. But I'll tell you, Rick Stansberry has been there a long time and is one of those guys that recruits great players to Starkville. And I have a feeling he'll get it going again. Now, the... This is what has been heard that Sidney tweeted this morning that he's out of there. Now that can't be confirmed right, right now, but that's what's that's what's floating around. 84 all as we're ready to get underway in overtime here in Oxford. Illinois State with a dynamite shooting performance all around, but especially from outside the arc, 76%. They've hit 16 threes tonight. 60% overall. 76 from three-point range, as you mentioned, and uh, 21 assists tonight for Illinois State on 27 field goals. That is about as good a, of offensive efficiency as you're going to see out of a college basketball team. 
We saw it last year, Joe, Wichita State winning the NIT. This year, it seems like that momentum propelled them to a real good season this year and an NCAA tournament berth. That is certainly what these coaching staffs are thinking about. A good performance this year in the NIT could lead to bigger and better things next season. No question. And Illinois State was a team with four brand new players in their lineup that uh, was picked eighth in the Missouri Valley. They tied for third, made it to the championship game where they lost in overtime battle to Creighton so uh, being a part of this NIT is, is certainly a pick-me-up and a confidence builder for the Illinois State Redbirds but Ole Miss they want to advance because if they can they have home court the, the next two if they can win this one first possession belongs to Ole Miss in overtime and it's deflected out of bounds 25 seconds on the shot clock for the Rebels The overtime records, Ole Miss 2-2, two and two, Illinois State 1-2. and two. Yeah, the, two, the two Ole Miss overtime losses were both double overtime on the road at Auburn and at Alabama. Henry thought about the three, now decides to take it after all. Great right block out. Missed it. Yeah, great block out by the Illinois State team. That ball could have bounced on the floor and they still would have gotten the rebound. Carmichael, a big dunk coming down the lane. How about the assist from Nick Moore, the freshman. They're coming out to guard a guy who's five for five from three-point range and Carmichael slips right down the lane. The nice bounce pass for the dunk. Summers, a three. Off the lift, and Wilkins pulls it down. Carmichael with his 14th double-double of the season tonight. 13 points, 10 rebounds. Top rebounder in the Missouri Valley. Oh, nice move for Eke. And Illinois State pounding it inside. Anthony Cousin. Ole Miss is so interested and concerned about the outside shooting. They're leaving the big men open down on the baseline. And those guards, Cousin, Nick Moore, great ball handlers, smart players. Look at the bounce pass. Great job right there, the two-man game. And then underneath, nobody covering Nick, or John Eakey, I should say. Breakdown by the Ole Miss defense. Illinois State makes him pay. Don't forget Sports Center U coming up after we wrap it up here in Oxford. Boy, uh, Tim Jankovic is going to have a good team again next season as well. He's very young, no seniors right on this roster. Three freshmen, a trio of sophomores, and five juniors. So they basically return intact. And a couple of guards that he signed early. Aaron Simpson, a 5'11 guard out of North Chicago High School. And then Anthony Bean Jr. is a 6'1 guard. Local kid from normal community high school. The reason I say he's local, his father is on the Illinois State staff, Anthony Bean, who was an all Big 12 guard at Kansas State back in the day. So coach's son coming to play for Tim Jankovic next year at Illinois State. It's a group that overachieved this year, at least if you go by what the media predicted yeah. before the season starts. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you put, take that with a grain of salt, but they were predicted to finish eighth in the Valley. Yeah, they, they were coming off a 12 and 19 yeah. season, which was a, a rebuilding year for Tim Jankovic, and rebuild he did. Brought in Tyler Brown, he brought in Nick Moore, the freshman. Uh, John Wilkins was new. Brian Allen transferred in from Minnesota, and those guys have led this team to a 2013 record and uh, tied for third in the regular season. And as we mentioned, upset Wichita State in the semifinals of the MVC, the Valley Tournament. What does the media know? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. And I'll tell you, if, if you listen to C.M. Newton, who is the chair of the NIT Selection Committee, he felt like that Washington out of the Pac-12 was overlooked. Yeah, they, they made were. them a number one seed. He felt like Arizona out of the Pac-12 was overlooked. The NIT made them a number one seed, although they lost tonight at home to Bucknell. So college basketball, a lot of parity. NIT very much a part of March Madness. Still a very, very good tournament every year. Here's Summers now. 20 seconds on the shot clock for Ole Miss. They're down four in overtime. Williams that hit the net and goes out of bounds. That's been the issue with Nick Williams all year. I mean, he made the three-pointer to tie the game in regulation, then shoots an air ball 
in his next shot here in overtime. Very inconsistent shooter, and he has been most of the year for the Rebels. Here's Hickey battling with Henry. We've seen that turnaround from him a few times tonight, and every time he's hit the bottom of the net. I'll tell you what, that is an impressive shot right there to shoot it over the shot blocker. Hickey, smart play on the turn to the middle. He's got 15. Summers. Foul. I tell you, I absolutely love Nick Moore. I mean, he is 5'9", 170 pounds, Warsaw, Indiana. Now, he fouled right there, but it uh, looked like he got a clean steal, and he is just a young man, very heady, handling the ball. He, he shot it well tonight. I really, really like this freshman point guard for the Redbirds. He's going to miss free throw for Ole Miss. They can hit afford those now. 10 of 19 on the night. That was the second, by the way, on Moore. He is one of four players in double figures for Illinois State tonight. Five-point game with 2.51 to go. Illinois, Illinois State with the lead and the ball. Ole Miss is out of timeouts here in the overtime. Cousin. Couldn't handle the pass. Henry, Offense. that's going to be a blocking foul. Henry got the benefit of the doubt. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, Henry has attacked the basket on the dribble all night long. He's put pressure on the defense. That looked like, let's see it one more time. I think that's a charge right there. I have to be honest. But uh, could have gone either way. You know, block charge or bang, bang. When you watch it in real time, it's hard. Yeah. That's the fourth on Carmichael. And Henry will go to the line. He's two for four at the strike. Another big game points-wise tonight for Terrence Henry. 19 points. It, it very well yeah. could be his last game in an Ole Miss uniform. Tonight. You know, and, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I asked Andy Kennedy, what are his pro chances? He's a senior. And Andy was very pleased to tell us that he has been invited to the Portsmouth Classic in Portsmouth, Ohio uh, in April, where they invite 64 college players to uh, invite the NBA scouts to come and look at these young men. They play a tournament over three days and a good opportunity for Terrence Henry. Here comes that crowd again, Joe. Three-point game. Moore finds the seam and kicks it out. Cousin, nice move. Great foul movement. Moore got it from the corner. I tell you what, that's as good a ball movement as moving the basketball, finding the open man as you're going to see by a college team. Tremendous. And another assist for the Redbirds. Moore still has not missed from three. Here's Henry. Left it short. And Moore goes up and lost it. Tough break right there for Illinois State. Got the shot they wanted and the rebound, but just could not control the basketball. White! He got it to go. That's going to be a two. It's a four-point game. What a game Ladarius White has played tonight. Moore kicks to the corner. Around and out for Wilkins. Chance for Ole Miss to cut it to one if they can hit a three. Just over a minute and a half to go in overtime. This is White. Tried to go back for Holloway and a backdoor cut. It's deflected out. Illinois State defended that very well. The ball screen from the corner. Little two-man game, but the Red Shirts were in good position that time. Now Williams is going to check back in here for Ole Miss. Tim Jankovic telling his players to go underneath the screen. Don't try to fight over the top where you get hung up. Go under it because he doesn't believe the Ole Miss perimeters can knock down shots consistently. Shot clock under 10. Summers drops it down for Holloway. Left hand. Oh. That's where their strength is right there. The inside. Leaders two. 
to go more. Ice cold. <laughs> Those veins are ice cold. And that was under pressure. That was with a hand in his face. Four point lead. More now with 24 points a career high. White got free and scores. 42.5 to go. Again, almost is out of timeouts. They don't want to foul this guy right here. And out of timeout by Illinois State. Illinois They've got State. one left. Yeah. 30 timeout. Well, Tim Jankovic is one got to set up an out of bounds play, and two keep the ball in the hands of their best foul shooters. There's the ball screen. Watch the ball movement. Two, three, four, bam, three-pointer. Tremendous penetration, kick out, reverse it, kick it back, find the open man. Very unselfish. And play, remember, this Illinois State team shoots over 75% at the free throw line as a team. That's number yeah. one in the Missouri Valley. And 22nd in the nation is the free throw shooting the Illinois State Redbirds tonight. Illinois State by two. They've got the possession arrow. They've got a timeout. And more importantly right now, they have the ball with 35.8 to go. They're going to try to keep the ball in the hands of number 11, Nick Moore, who is an 82% foul shooter and been to the line a number of times tonight. 30 seconds to play. Got a six-second di six differential. Ole Miss is not going to foul. They got to get a stop right here and the rebound, and then hurry down the court. Eight on the shot clock. Moore makes his move. Tries to hand off out of bounds to Ole Miss with 10.5 to play. Shot clock off at Ole Miss with a chance to win it. As Jankovic calls the timeout. That's going to give Ole Miss an opportunity to set up a last shot opportunity. Obviously, only need a two-pointer to tie this game. Yeah, just a tough pass. Eke was contested on the drive right there. Nick Williams, good job getting in the passing lane and forcing that turnover. So what do you do now if you're Andy Kennedy here? Well, I suspect that Illinois State is going to get back in the 2-3 zone. That's what they did on the last possession of regulation. Now, why do they do that? You look at the, the brackets there. Big game here for the Rebels since Arizona has lost. I've already mentioned that. But the reason you're going to be in the zone if you're Illinois State is to eliminate penetration to the lane. Now, once that ball is kicked out on the perimeter, got to go out and contest the shot and then make sure you block out and go let those big Rebels on the offensive glass, so a lot of strategy on both sides. I predict the zone by Illinois State, and uh, Ole Miss will try to counter with some penetration, kick it out for the shot, and then crash the offensive backboard. Well, it's been a decent shooting night tonight for Ole Miss, too. 49% on the night, but it pales in comparison because Illinois State tonight, 63%. Let's see if Ole Miss can hit a big shot here. Summers. They're in the zone. Five seconds. Williams throws it out bounds. And Illinois State has it with 3.5 to go. What a breakdown. Good job by Cousin to get a taller John Wilkins to throw the ball out of bounds from inbounds. And Williams commits the foul on Cousin. Well, I mean, that pass by Williams wasn't even close. Just an unforced error. There's nothing you can say. He just lost control of it and just let it sail on him. Yeah, I mean, my goodness. I don't know what happened, but tough break for the Ole Miss Rebels. Don't forget Sports Center U coming up next. As soon as we're done here in Oxford. Cousin has one more free throw, and he can make it a two-possession game. And I don't know, know that Ole Miss would have enough time anyway.
State wins on the road here in the first round of the NIT. They will travel out west to take on Stanford. Here's a look at the updated bracket. Game will be Monday at 11.30 Eastern on ESPNU and Illinois State. You know, they deserve to win this game. They absolutely were fantastic shooting the basketball. They absolutely deserve to win this game. They, they played hard. They shot it well. And the happiest group in America right now are the Stanford Cardinal because not only are they going to get a home game with Illinois State coming out west, but if they win that, they'll also have a home game in the third round. 96-93, the final in overtime as the Redbirds win it for Joe Dean Jr. and her entire ESPN crew. I'm Clay Matvick. Coming up next, it's Sports Center U. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. What a night for the Redbirds. They were 17 of 23 from three, 74%. Almost unheard of, especially in postseason play. But that's what happened tonight in Oxford. We say so long, and now we go to Sports Center U.